Dear Martin, Chapter 5. The minute Jared, Kyle, Tyler, and Blake stepped into Manny's basement, it's clear Jared's equality barrage thing was a terrible idea. In the month and a half since the racial equality discussion, so show Evo, Jared's been on a crusade to prove things in America are equal. Last week, he told Manny and his crew about this brilliant ass idea he had. Bros, he said, let's all dress as different stereotypes for Halloween and then go out together. It'll be a massive political statement about racial equality and broken barriers and shit. Dude, even ask Justice to participate. Just, of course, wasn't real clean at first, but he let Manny talk him into it. He regretted that now. Five of the six costumes are mostly fine. Just as a thug, naturally, pants belted around his thighs with boxers exposed, thug life t-shirt, thick gold chains with a huge medallion, fitted flat bill baseball cap. He and Manny even made grills out of gum wrappers for Just to wear on his bottom teeth. Manny's the token black guy, coat, khakis, loafers, and a polo with a cable knit sweater draped over his shoulders and tied loosely at the chest. He's really into it, too. As soon as he was dressed, he started calling Just old chap and my good man. Jared's the yuppie politician. He's wearing a suit, even has a spot on his chin where he nicked himself shaving and left a little piece of tissue there for effect. Tyler's the surfer dude, board shorts and a tank top, even though it's only 50 degrees out. Kyle went with redneck, woodland camouflage, overalls, trucker hat, with a Confederate flag pitch, dingy cowboy boots. Even has his sister attach a few of her hair extensions so he has a mullet. Frankly, this one is towing the line, but okay. Not quite crossing it. Blake, though, Blake takes it too far. He dressed as a Klansman. He got on the white robe with a circular red and white cross patch on his chest. And he even has the pointed hood with the eye holes cut out. If Justin know it was a costume, he'd be a little scared. Um, can I talk to you for a sec, dog? And he says to Jared, who, to Justice's surprise, also seems pretty uncomfortable with Blake's choice of attire. Sure, man. They walk to Manny's room, and Justice is left standing with the others. Justice, that costume is sick, homie, Blake says, because a clanman would definitely call a black guy homie. Just fights the urge to shake his head. Yours is, uh, wait till I put the hood on, bro. That's right. This right here is a, the genuine article. He spreads his arms, beaming like he's wrapped in a garment formerly worn by Jesus. Justice is tempted to ask where the genuine article came from, but he's not sure he wants to know the answer. Just then, Justice reappears. Hey, Justice, Manny wants to talk to you, bro. Justice nods and takes the deepest breath he's ever taken and strides into Manny's room with Eight white boys' eyes burning into him like lasers. Yeah, this blows. Sup, dog? Just says as once he steps in and closes Manny's door. Though, of course, he already knows what it's about. So Blake's costume is, well, you saw it. Just snorts. I did. If you, um, and he scratches his neck, don't want to go anymore. It's cool, Manny. Manny's thick eyebrows jump to the sky. It is? Yeah, man. Truth is, four hours ago, Jess was ready to back out because of the idea of going anywhere with Jared and his crew just felt wrong, knowing what he was, knows about how they think. But then he stumbled upon Manny's definition of in interrogation, integration, intergroup and interpersonal living, and decided to just go with it. He's not sure this is exactly what Martin meant, but what is he supposed to say? You ready to go, dog? Oh, and he clears his throat. I guess so. Let's roll then. Just leaves the room. It's just a costume, right? Brotherhood for the win. As soon as Jess and Manny get back to the others, Jared takes a bunch of group pictures and posts them online. Then he says, equality barrage. Let's ride. And leads the charge to the door. When they get to Manny's car and Blake pulls on the hood and raises his arm in the Nazi salute, Justice knows the train he just hopped on is heading downhill in a major way. It occurs to him that moment that the moment he said he was cool with the whole thing, he cut the brake lines and completely surrendered his power to stop it. And he's right. 
Not five minutes after they get to the party, someone sucker punches Blake in the face. The burst of bright red beneath the eye holes in his pointed hood makes Justice sick to his stomach. The next thing he knows, there's a group of genuinely thugged out black dudes and one white guy standing in front of the equality barrage, looking like they want to break all of their stereotype faces. The worst part? Justice knows every single one of them. They live in his mom's neighborhood. This is Manny's cousin's crew. Justice is pretty sure they all belong to a gang called the Black Jihad, run by a crazy older dude named Martel Montgomery. Dark-skinned guy with a short dreadlocks gives Just a once-over and smiles. That's a real funny costume, Justice. Oh, um, thanks, Trey. Definitely not Justice's most valid, valent comment. And you? Trey says to Manny. You Quan's cousin, right? Yeah, Manny says, scratching the back of his neck. The F you all doing here with these ass clowns, bruh? Just gonna let you let your boy disrespect our people like that? Trey points to Blake, who has to remove his pointed hood and is holding his nose to staunch the bleeding. Jared. Dude, we didn't mean you any disrespect. Manny, chill, Jared. Trey. Yeah, Jared. You should really shut your mouth right now. Your boys made me and my dudes upset coming here dressed like that. Justice. Trey, he didn't mean anything by it, dog. You're going to do the satire thing with stereotypes, and it went too far. Lesson learned. Trey smiles at Justice, then. Well, more like sneers. Makes Justice feel like cockroaches are walking all over him. You ain't changed a bit, Justice. Still Mr. Smarty Pants, Trey says. And then one of the other pipe up. Y'all know he's gone goes to that rich ass white school out in Oak Ridge now. It's called Braston Prep, Jared corrects. Justice really wants Jared to shut the hell up. Ooh. The white dude, Brad, Justice believes, raises his hand in mock adoration. Trey looks back and forth between Jess and Manny. Don't get it twisted, my dogs. These white boys might be standing here next to y'all, but y'all still ain't nothing but N word to them. Y'all hear me, he said. Ain't no amount of money nor intelligence can change that shit. Jared, hey man, that's not true. You don't have, shut up, Jared. This is from Surfer Tyler. Let's just leave, bro. Trey, sounds like a great idea to me. Jared, bro, this isn't even your party. You can't tell us to leave. Trey laughs. One of the other guys lifts his shirt to reveal the handgun grip sticking out of his waistband. I most certainly can, white boy. Trey says, now you and y'all little crew, get your punk asses out of here before things escalate. The guy with the gun smiles at Jess. You and your rich boy can stay if, with us if you want. All the black jihad guys laugh. Trey, bro, you know these N-words? Don't want to chill with us. They go, they go in places and shit. Gotta stay connected to the white man for the ride to the top. He nudges the white guy with the with them, and they both snicker. Let's go, y'all, Just says. As they turn to leave, Justice can feel Manny trying to catch his attention. They stare straight ahead. They step outside, and the chilly night air hits their faces. Just hears Jared ask Manny, you all right, bro? Yeah, man, I'm cool, Manny replies. Jared steps ahead to talk to the others. And Jess watches Manny examine his tied sweater, his khakis, his loafers, his costume, made up of clothes he pulled from his closet. He unties the sweater and then looks up at Justice. For the moment, they understand each other. Justice takes the fitted cap from his head and the fake chain from his neck. Happy Halloween, motherfuckers. Trey calls out behind them. November 1st. Dear Martin, it's 2 a.m. and I just got off the phone with SJ. Just crazy. Started out innocently enough. When I got to my room at 10, 15 p.m., I had a missed call from her. Figured it had to do with the debate stuff since the state tournament is around the corner, so I decided to hit her back. Here's how it went down. SJ, hello? Me, hey, SJ, it's just as you called. SJ, call her idea, Jess. No need to announce yourself. Me, oh, okay. SJ laughs. I was just calling to see how Douche Nugget Christensen's experiment at you and Manny's expense went. I saw the pics he posted and had to go for a run to keep from showing up at the party and punching Blake in the face. 
me. Yeah, no worries about that. Somebody did it for you. SJ, shut up. Someone punched him for real? Me. Ruined his pointed hood. SJ laughed so hard. I think she's going to choke. Me. So, how was your night? SJ, uneventful. I spent most of it thinking about you. Me. SJ, I mean, um, sorry, that came out wrong. Me. SJ, Joss, are you still there? God, I'm such an idiot. Me. Clear his throat. I'm here. SJ. Woo. Okay, good. Me and SJ. Awkward pause. Me. So, um, how is it supposed to come out? SJ. Well, I just meant because of the costumes. Like, I saw the picture and I was wondering how things were going at the party. Me. Ah. SJ. You don't believe me, do you? Me. Why wouldn't I? Even though in my head I was like, hell no, I don't believe you, girl. SJ laughs. Certainly wouldn't believe me. Me. SJ. I have to say I'm enjoying this rendering Justice makes Alistair speechless thing. Maybe I should say this kind of stuff more often. Me. Shut up. SJ laughs some more. So how are you anyway? Me. What do you mean? SJ. I'm sure the whole party thing was awkward. No? Me. It's one way to put it, I guess. No clue why, but I tell SJ every detail about the party. SJ, wow, so they threatened you with a gun to get you to go? Yep. SJ, that's pretty intense, Jess. Me, tell me about it. Craziest part is I still feel weird about leaving. SJ, you do? Why? Me, well, either way I went, I was saying something, you know? Staying would have been a statement of solidarity with these guys I grew up with and who look like me. Leaving was a different statement, and the fact that I chose to do it with a white guy who was dressed as a Klansman. Well, SJ, hmm, I see what you mean. Me, yeah. These were dudes who used to call me white boy because while they were shooting dice or pennies at recess, I was reading a book. I know there's no excuse for the idea that we're all the same kind as that cop Costello put it, but the moment I saw that gun sticking out of the dude's waistband, I felt this flare of pain around my wrist. I had this thought, be forewarned, it's an ugly one. It's assholes like Trey and his boys that have cops thinking all black dudes are up to no good. SJ, so sorry, Joss. Me, don't apologize, S. It's not your fault. It never made sense to me why trying to do something with myself made me some kind of race traitor to these guys. But some of the stuff Trey said tonight really got to me. SJ, really? Me. Yeah, he said me and Manny were chilling with Jared and them because we need the white man for the ride to the top. And while I could debate that till I'm blue in the face, didn't we prove it by leaving with Jared and them? SJ. I guess that one's one way to look at it. Me. What if Trey is right? What if no matter what I do, the only thing white people will ever see me as is uh, an... An N-word. So, glad I caught myself, Martin. Me, continued. Yeah, Jared's always talking about how equal things are, but that doesn't mean he sees me as one. SJ, silence. Me, it's a conundrum. White people hold most positions of authority in this country. How do I deal with the fact that I do need them to get ahead without feeling like I'm turning my back on my own people? SJ, sure hope that's rhetorical, Jess. I certainly can't give you an answer. He laughs. We shift gears a little bit after that, and we when I checked the clock, it had been three hours. We landed on the topic of Jewish involvement in the civil rights movement. I wound up telling her about this Be Like Martin experiment. She said she was both impressed and intrigued. That's when it hit me who I was talking to, and I said I needed to go to bed. Before I hung up, though, she said something I don't think I'll ever forget. SJ. Hey, Joss. Me. Yeah? SJ. I want to apologize. Me. For what? SJ. For stepping out of line in class a while back. Me. SJ. I know it's been over a month, but after talking to you tonight, well, it wasn't my place to speak for you. I'm really, really sorry. Hearing her apologize after Blake didn't, that got me, Martin. Now, I can't get her out of my head, which really isn't good. Don't get me wrong, SJ's great. 
We've been debate partners since I joined the team two years ago. Only person at the school who knows more about me than she does is Manny. Yes, she's gorgeous for a white girl. She's tall with brown hair. And while not a big booty, Betty, the lacrosse body is tight. Yeah, she's smart and funny and easy to talk to and kind of feisty. Which now that I'm seeing her in this new light is kind of a turn on. Martin, I can't fall for SJ. My whole life, Mama told me, don't you bring home a white girl. We're talking about a woman who low-key disses mellow for looking white. Can you imagine what kind of reaction I'd get if it were SJ? Mellow and I, mellow and I broke up again, by the way. Right now, I feel guilty for even talking to SJ, especially about race stuff. What does it say about me that I'm willing to willingly left a party with a bunch of idiots, but the white person who does treat me as an equal is the one I most want to run away from right now? I can't believe I told SJ all that stuff. I mean, she's cool and everything, but I'm shaking my head right now. You were the man, Martin, the man. And I want to be like you intergroup and interpersonal living. I really do want that. Just not so sure I can pull it off anymore. I'm going to bed. JM.